Here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, it's time for a Conference USA showdown in a rivalry renewed. Middle Tennessee, led by Tiafio Leonard, makes a short trip to take on Hilltopper star Davion McKnight. It's a whiteout at Diddle Arena in Bowling Green, charged and ready to rock tonight. This is Diddle Arena on the Western Kentucky campus. A big crowd expected to watch all rivals tonight. Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky separated by some 100 miles. Meet for the 144th time. Checking the latest Conference USA standings. FAU number 18 in the net today. The Owls having a fabulous season. The Mean Green not far behind. Middle Tennessee in the conversation for a league championship. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Great to have you with us. Dave Ryan alongside B.J. Taylor, former star guard at UCF and partner you know from your days with the Knights when you guys played USF, the dreaded Bulls. It was a big deal, right? Absolutely, Ronald. Anytime you have a rivalry game like this, you're playing for more than your team. You're playing for your fan bases. So I tell you this much, we're going to have an exciting battle here in Bowling Green because bragging rights are on the line. We can't wait. First time these teams met in Murfreesboro. T. Leonard had himself a huge game for the Blue Raiders, and his team won by five. He's a high flyer, number two in CUSA in block shots. Yeah, Rhino, T. Leonard has been the X factor for this Middle Tennessee ball club throughout the season. If you're a college basketball fan who loves high-flying dunks and big-time blocks from a guard, T. Leonard should be one of your favorite players. But on the other side, Western Kentucky has found a breakout star themselves. Dante Allen, the Kentucky transfer, has been on fire from the three-point line. We spoke with him earlier today, and he said, hey, while I was sitting out, I spent time staying in the gym, I stayed locked in, and it's showing right now in his play on the court. When we come back to Bowling Green, it is game time. These two bitter arch rivals meet again. The Blue Raiders want a season sweep. The toppers want a split. Lineups and tip on the way. Great rivalry renewed here tonight. Bowling Green, Kentucky. Middle has won three straight against the Toppers in 16 of the last 22 head-to-head -head starting lineups tonight. They call him Uncle Dish in Murfreesboro. DeAndre Dishman, one of seven seventh-year players in the nation this year, missed almost two years due to knee injuries. Team captain now and a team leader, Dante Allen, a major surprise. Can he have a third straight career-type game? Toppers, third Conference USA Player of the Week winner this year. He told us today, BJ, he stayed as patient as possible, kept working hard in practice. Now it's his turn now. We're underway, meeting 144, Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee tonight. Hilltoppers, home whites. McKnight for Acott. Boise State transfer up top, 4-3. That's a good start for the home team. That's a terrific action to start the game by Coach Stansberry. Runs a nice high ball screen, has Jamarion Sharp roll into the basket. That creates the open shot for Emmanuel Acott. First half court possession, Eli Lawrence and the Blue Raiders. Won a five point game on New Year's Eve, head to head with Western the first time these teams met. They picked Devitt, their head coach, would like a game in the 60s. Defensive oriented team. Dishman finds a loose change, four to shoot, baseline, looking for a roll, doesn't get it. Fresh 20 for Lawrence. From the free throw line, the lefty can't click. Tipped up, almost in. Gilford for another crack at it, blocked by Sharp. Jamarion Sharp, nation's leading rejector. 98th block of the year for the all-time leader, Western Kentucky, history in rejections. Absolutely, and this is the hard part about playing against Jamarion Sharp. Nothing easy is gonna come in the paint, but we saw Middle Tennessee on that last possession able to get three offensive rebounds. Western Kentucky has got to box out and keep Middle Tennessee off of the glass. 7-5, tallest player in the nation for a second straight year. A turnover goes against Eli Lawrence. The team's leading score, 12.1 points a game, balanced attack for Middle Tennessee. Rick Stansbury, two and two partner. Since his return from a personal health issue, associate head coach Phil Cunningham took over, went three and six in the nine games. Coach Stansbury was out. He told us today he's feeling much better day to day, but on the mend. Absolutely, and his team is happy to have their head coach back out there on the floor. It's so important for continuity. McKnight floats baseline, tough shot for the lefty. All Conference USA preseason, first team. All league pick last year, leading scorer for the Hilltoppers. He's a threat. Yeah, so good at getting to his left hand. Buford way off. Deep shot, not close. 
McKnight, the southpaw. Jarius Hamilton with him, top of the key. Here's McKnight looking for two for two. Sharp avoids the early foul. Very important. Does not go over the back. Yep. That's key. A big guy like Jamarion Sharp, he's got to stay out of foul trouble. Dishman attacks the big guy at 7-5, DeAndre Dishman for two. And, and, you know, we spoke with Coach McDevitt earlier. We said, how do you attack a player like Jamarion Sharp? And DeAndre Dishman put it on full display right there. You do not hesitate how you attack a big fella like him. You just have to be smart about how you do it. Middle Tennessee, one for six, first field goal made from Dishman. Here's Allen, top of the key. Can he keep it going? Looks like a great start for Dante Allen, the Kentucky transfer, former Mr. Basketball in this basketball mad state here in the Bluegrass State of Kentucky. Two years at UK, didn't play a lot there, was a redshirt as well. Getting his chance now, taking advantage. Lawrence, way short, loose change. Buford for two. Just a careless turnover right there by Western Kentucky. All the momentum is on your side, and then that just kills it, right? I know Coach Stansberry hates to see that. JC transfer, Shelton State. Had four blocks against Rice, a career best. The role player for Nick McDevitt. Got a lot of guys very similar physically and ability-wise. Skill set, missed there. Acott baseline. Lawrence has the rebound. Millen. Had a career best 15 against UTEP. Recent win for the Blue Raiders. Buford, here's Dishman. Attacks short. Up top along three. Missed there. Justin Porter. No JC transfer. The sophomore can't click from deep. Game you and I saw against UAB. A nail biter win for Western on the road. Acott got hurt, had a head injury, missed three games. Been back now. That was in mid January. Sharp free for a second. Great hands, Eli Lawrence. Mill on the takeaway. Quick to the basket for two. That was all created by the extremely smart play of Eli Lawrence. He pulled the chair on Jamarion Sharp, which forced the turnover, allowed West, excuse me, Middle Tennessee to get out in transition. Allen down low. Hamilton the hammer. Boston College and Maryland transfer third stop, making a count for the toppers in Conference USA. McKnight the takeaway. And so far in this game, Rhino, Western Kentucky has matched Middle Tennessee's intensity and physicality on both ends of the floor. That's one of the keys to the game. Sharp up high. <laughs> Foul. <laughs> Down low on Millen. And the big guy with a lob at 7-5 for a second straight year. The nation's tallest player will try to complete the three-point play when we return to Bowling Green. And you know what, Ronald? When you have a 7-5 player like Jamal Yon Sharp, there's no reason not to give it to him. Throw it up for the big fella and let him throw it down. All right, BJ, let's take a look at the AT&T 5G Fast Analysis and break down this bitter arch rivalry a bit further. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, when you look at this graphic right here, Middle Tennessee is one of the best shooting teams in Conference USA. On the flip side, Western Kentucky does not do a good job of defending to three. That is so key because whenever Middle Tennessee wins basketball games, a lot of times it starts at the three-point line. Both coaches told us that today, how important it was going to be. Two-game win streak for each entering play here tonight. Jamarion Sharp was fouled just before the break. You know, the all-time leading shot blocker in Western history. Up to 246, and this is 51st career game. Does complete the three-point play. Got a good touch from the free-throw line. We've seen him shoot 10 feet and in. But it doesn't happen much in games. Yeah, and, you know, we, we talking about the defensive side of the ball. Western Kentucky needs to get middle off of the three because there's really no excuse. When you have a 7-5 player like Jamarion Sharp patrolling the paint, you should get up into your defender and force them off of the line. T. Leonard into the game off the bench. Had an ankle injury a couple games back in the Florida trip to FIU, FAU. So he's been playing the sixth man for Coach McDevitt the last couple games. They've been winning, so they're sticking with the formula. Might be their best player, now their sixth man. Absolutely. Give a lot of credit to him for staying locked in, didn't get down on himself, has continued to play at a level that he knows he can play at. It got thought about Sharp. Instead, Hamilton, deep three, corner pocket. 
And Sharp kept it alive for a moment. It's off the hands of DeAndre Dishman and out of bounds. Nick McDevitt, three and four as a head coach, head to head with our tribal Western Kentucky. He talked to us today about the transition battle, the rebound battle. And when it comes to Sharp, he said, don't give him a runway. Like <laughs> with his wingspan at 7'5, like an airplane about to take off from Nashville Airport. You gotta make sure you block the rim a little bit. Just don't let him just get there easily. Yep, and they didn't do a good job of that on the lob we saw previously. You gotta impede a big fella like Jamarion Sharp's momentum. Hamilton, McKnight, five to shoot. Baseline, contested shot hits. So smooth, Davion McKnight. And Lionel, he is so good we can go to that left hand. He can go all the way to the rim. He can shoot the pull up. Jay off it or the three. Tafiel Leonard thinking three. A back iron miss, kept alive briefly. Down low by Jared Coleman-Jones. Transfer from Northwestern to the Big Ten. He's in for the first time. Same for Cameron Western. Uh, Weston, another transfer from Southeastern Community College. And they caught out. Hamilton out for now. Tyrone Marshall. JC transfer in. First time Western Kentucky. We saw him have a huge three. Late in the game at UAB last month. Led to a Western win. Big piece off the bench for the Hilltoppers. Coleman Jones. It's Carey. Carey call. That was against Cameron Weston. Bit of indecision right here on Cameron Weston's part. They had a good possession going, got the ball side to side, but then you see him right there, just couldn't make a decisive play on what he wanted to do with the basketball. Jordan Rawls transferred Georgia State in for the first time. Missed a couple games with a hand injury, but back and healthy now. Big part of the rotation for Western Kentucky. You think about some of the pieces. This is a really good team led by this guy, McKnight. Sixth leading scorer in Conference USA. And the big guy, Jamari on Sharp at 7-5. You wonder, well, why are they 13-11? What's happened? Well, yep. their head coach missed nine games, a third of the season. Their strength coach has been out three weeks. Yep. He fell and hurt himself. Lots of injury issues. Ross hits. Looks good there off the bench for Western. Luke Frampton, one of their all-time great three-point shooters, tore his ACL recently against Charlotte. He's out for the year. Yeah, I mean, the first thing to having a good team, a good program, is having all your players and your coaches available. You've got to have that continuity. Without it, it becomes difficult. Lawrence can't click. Reverse layup baseline. King into the game. Back for Lawrence. Thinking three. Hits. And, you know, he's been the best player, the most consistent player for Middle Tennessee throughout the entire season, Ryan. We spoke with him earlier today, and I said, you feel pressure to score every night? He said, no, I come out, I let the game come to me. And he did that on that last play. Got 979 career points now, thinking about 1,000 for his career. Out on the drive, offensive foul. The Kentucky transfer who has been an incredible story. Conference USA player of the week. The pick of his first foul. And you love Dante Allen's aggressiveness, but you got to know that number 31, Coleman Jones, is the best charge taker on this Middle Tennessee ball club. Every time he comes in, he's not looking to block shots. He's looking to sacrifice his body and take a charge. Got to know that. Got to know that. Jun from Senegal at 6'11 in for the first time for Western. Same for Christian Lander, the Indiana transfer. So each coach subbing liberally here yep. to begin the game tonight in this Arch rivalry renewed. Steal. And Western and Marshall. Look out! Tyro Marshall. Up, up, and away. Talk about Jamarion Sharp taking taking off. Let's talk about Tyron Marshall taking off. Incredible. King trying to answer a three. Back iron miss. For Lou Jun. Northwest Florida State, J.C. transfer. Can hit a three, thinking about a triple. Hits it! Right on cue for John. Nick McDevitt calls a timeout for Middle Tennessee. Rick Stansbury told us the big guy trailing can hit beyond the arc, and he does it right there. And this is exactly what you want for your coach Stansbury squad. Playing at home, get the fans behind you, get it rolling here in Bowling Green. CBS Sports Network is sponsored by KitKat.
Have a break. Have a Kid Kat. Buy Sleep Number. Discover proven quality sleep only at a Sleep Number store or sleepnumber.com. And buy Chewy. Shop online at Chewy today and get great prices on pet essentials. Being separated by 100 miles, depending on which route you say. Google Maps <laughs> might say 80 miles, but it's a 100-mile rivalry. 144th all-time meeting. At home, Western has won 54 of 71 games. So they've been great here in Bowling Green. A series that goes back to 1914-1915. Awesome tradition. Absolutely, Ronald. And this has started off as another classic matchup so far tonight. Western Kentucky has come out firing on all cinders, shooting, excuse me, cylinders, shooting 9 of 12 from the field, 3 of 5 from the three-point line. Middle Tennessee's got to pick up the defensive intensity or Western Kentucky's going to keep it rolling. 9 of 12, Parker. That'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it, right? That'll get you some, get you some wins. That'll get you a lead. Coppers have hit their last four in this game. These things settle a bit. West in the handle. Lawrence told us today, you know, I beat these guys last time here in Bowling Green. Want to repeat the feat. Won't be easy. Coleman Jones the touch. Good defense there from John. Seven to shoot. Lawrence to take for two. And Western Kentucky has got to rotate over on the back side. That was a completely broken play. Just allowed an easy bucket. West a nice rotation. Good pressure. Has the steal. This is what Middle likes to do. Harass you defensively and cause some turnovers and good opportunities. Tracked down by Lawrence here at the timeline. See what T. Leonard can do here, the high flyer. Six man now. West in the handle. Foul in the paint. And a chance for free throws here for Cam West and the junior. Now this is when Middle Tennessee is at their best. They're able to get downhill, not only create plays for themselves at the bucket, but then they get kick out threes off of that paint penetration. Foul their partner on Christian Lander. Indiana transfer. Sends West to the free throw line, shooting two. 22 of 24 games. Cam Weston has an assist for middle this year, been a valuable piece. 15 win season so far. Coming up next, game two of our college basketball doubleheader. Pepperdine hosts BYU, West Coast Conference. Keep it right here on CBS Sports Network. Can't wait for that one. St. Mary's and Zaga having great seasons in that league again. Waltz and Mike O'Donnell, former UCF Knight, like yourself, yes. on the call. Come on next year. Who was better? You know, who was better? Uh, well, let's not get into that. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, okay, well, <laughs> Sean Wow, special. Coleman Jones. That's better. Big block. Weston, run out. Lots of contact. Count it. The end one for Cam Weston. Chance for a three point play. That's what Middle Tennessee does. And we spoke with Coach Stansberry earlier today. He said, listen, we've got to keep Middle Tennessee out of transition. And you see the drive right here. Coleman Jones comes over and gets it out of there. And then Manuel Acott just couldn't get set on the charge. Cameron Weston makes some pay with the finish at the bucket. And now we mentioned, hey, Middle Tennessee need to come out and impose their defensive intensity, be a little more aggressive on that end, and they're doing that now. They're chipping away at this lead, getting back in the game. Chance three-point play here for Weston. Can't convert. A junior from Albany, Georgia. He's got the program's only rebound assist double-double. It's kind of hard to believe. Rebound assist 10-10. and 10. McKnight take for two of the lefty with that great touch around the rim. And I can highlight how good of a player Davion McKnight is should be another first team conference, all conference USA player, but got to keep him off his left hand. Weston for King for the easy hammer. Elias King, transfer of Mississippi State, sends it down with authority. Timeout for Jarius Hamilton in Western Kentucky. The pressure off the make, so key for the Blue Raiders. Absolutely. Timeout here at Diddle Arena. Bowling Green, Kentucky. We're back in 30 seconds. Here are BJ's keys to the game tonight. And you know, Middle Tennessee came out. They did not impose their physicality earlier. They're doing a better job of that now. But Western Kentucky's others, their role players around Davion McKnight have played well. Every starter has scored so far in this game. And they're going to need those guys if they want to continue to keep their lead. 
McKnight lobs. Sharp gathers. The nation's tallest player at 7'5 makes it look easy. Wow. The wingspan is incredible. Another rim rocker. And this is all starting with Davion McKnight right now. Middle Tennessee has got to contain this guy because he's getting wherever he wants on the floor. King almost lost it. Nice one-handed grab. Acock, good hustle. Kept it alive. Darius Hamilton finds it. Here's Allen. Acock, stripped. T. Leonard made the great defensive play for the Blue Raiders. Cam Weston on the move. From the elbow, fires the pass. Leonard, nice cut. Just couldn't bring it in. A little too hot to handle. And turnover back to Western. And, and we know that, hey, listen, Davion McKnight is the best player for West Kentucky. So Middle Tennessee's got to stop the ball. You can't let him get that deep into the paint. Because when you do, this is what happens. A good guard like him, he is going to go until you stop him. Middle Tennessee's got to keep a guy like that out of the paint. Three assists, McKnight. Last time against Middle. Sharp, three points, eight rebounds, four blocks. He is a shot-blocking machine. 98 swats. That leads the nation by 18. <laughs> Blocks over the next best player in the country. He's something else. It's not easy to score around him, huh? No. Yeah. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Eight to shoot for Allen. Step back three over Porter. Can't click. Look at how high team Leonard goes for the rebound. I'd take him as a sixth man anytime. Uh, wouldn't you? Feeling now that Middle Tennessee has settled down a bit after a rough start. What they like to do, use the shot clock. Yep. We're going to go into a high ball screen action right here between Justin Porter and DeAndre Dishman. Porter challenges Sharp, guess what? A block and then a foul on the outlet pass on Justin Porter is first. And every anytime you see a head tap, it's always a ball screen, but Jamarion Sharp kind of baited Justin Porter into that shot. He didn't get his body in front of him, so he said, hey, go ahead in there. You got it. It's a wide open layup. Then he comes over and sends it out of there. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Eight games this year, partner. Five plus blocks for Sharp. 20 rejections. Entering playing his last five. He's got two already here tonight in the first half. Incredible. He, he does an incredible job of not only Blocking shots that come directly to him, but as we saw in that last play, he can set offensive players up to get their shot block. Weave from McKnight on the baseline with Porter gets physical, earns a trip to the free throw line, shooting two. That's two fouls on Justin Porter. The paint, the paint, the paint. It's where Davion McKnight lives. He's going to get downhill. So we're going to look at his own ball defender and say, hey, you got to keep him in front. You got to keep him in front. But the rest of his team has got to clog the lane so that he does not see open creases to get downhill. Because so right now, he's the one causing the majority of the issues for Middle Tennessee. He started all 56 games of his topper career. Double figures in 49 of those, and he's headed to another big game here tonight. Another free throw on the way for McKnight. Weston back in, and Porter takes a seat with the two fouls. Six in the conference in scoring. And the numbers are outstanding. I'm with you. He'll be another first-team pick in Conference USA this year. Repeat what he did a year ago. No question. He's the caliber of player to be a player of the year. It's just that Conference USA has some really remarkable players. We think of Jelly Walker. think of some of the guys that FAU has. It's tough. It is tough. Millen up top, thinking three, clicks. Tyler Millen, a deep triple, his 16th three of the year. It's the kind of game Middle wants to play. Yeah. Half court, offensively, defensively, and cause turnovers and wreak havoc with some run out dunks. Sharp, the high post touch. Big screen at 7 5, and Knight thought about a three. Number 10 to shoot for Allen. Kentucky transfer, needs a bailout, gets it from Acock. Emmanuel Acock for three, rattles out, beats the timer, rebound down low. McKnight is so tough, offensive glass. This is not a big guy. No. Right, 6-3 guard, but does it all for Western. No, he's everywhere on the floor. I mean, we showed his points and assists. He's also one of the best rebounders for Western Kentucky at nearly five a game. Weston steps back, hits a two in response for Middle Tennessee. Another 10-plus point game for Davion McKnight. Yeah, at this point, it's just becoming routine, you know. 
a guy as good as him, he's figured out how to be successful in college basketball. He knows his spots. He knows what he needs to do out there for his team. Surpassed 1,000 career points this year. Sharp down low again. It's going to be there. Absolutely. The rim rod and the hammer for the 7-5 center. And those are the kind of passes that Western Kentucky needs to make more of. See, when you have a 7-5 guy like that, those are lobs that you usually won't get to a 6-10, 6-11 player. But to him, it's there. It's available. Weston trying to step back again and hit. And the script continues with Cam Weston having a really big first half for Middle Tennessee. Sharp has three dunks in the game tonight. Four assists for McKnight early on. And three of those on the lob and hammer to Jamarion Sharp. And we see Cameron Weston starting to get it percolating, but Coach Stansbury is not going to overreact to those shots. Those are tough, contested twos. McKnight through traffic is bumps. Foul called on Justin Buford. Timeout. It's a whiteout tonight. Great crowd, great atmosphere in Conference USA. Legends of Western Kentucky basketball. Clem Haskins, Dwight Smith joined the WKU program in the fall of 1963. Clem Haskins, one of 11 children raised on a farm in Campbellsville, Kentucky. Dwight Smith from Princeton, Kentucky, the valedictorian of his high school. They were recruited by WKU coaching legend E.A. Diddle, for whom this arena is named. Haskins, 22 points, 10 rebounds a game. As CBS Sports celebrates black history, its limitless culture, undeniable impact, happy Black History Month. Clem Haskins' partner, three-time Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year. White Smith, average a career double-double, was drafted by the LA Lakers yeah. after a legendary career here in Bowling Green. Tragically, just days later, was killed in a car accident in May of 1967. White Smith's number was retired at a ceremony at halftime here last week in a home game for Western Kentucky. Two real legends of WKU. Absolutely. Both Clem Haskins and Dwight Smith paved the way for so many players that came after them with their unthinkable bravery and courage. So just got to say thank you to those guys for everything they've done. Well said. Four to shoot. Here's Allen for three. Clicks again. Dante Allen's second triple first half here for Western Kentucky. The great storyline continues to unfold for uh, a forgotten player on the bench getting his chance with Frampton out with a knee injury for the year. Yep. Amazing. Dishman gathers and finishes. And you know, for a guy like Dante Allen, sometimes you're just more comfortable as a starter. For whatever reason it may be, when you come off the bench, you're not as comfortable, you're not as confident, but he's proven it. When he's in the starting lineup, he plays like a starting lineup caliber player. What a turnaround. Yeah, nice chat with him today at the shoot around. Yeah. Very confident now. McKnight floats, hits again. He's just had a great first half. Five of six from the field and 12 points for Davion McKnight. Allen told us it feels like I'm back in high school. You know, Mr. Basketball in this incredible state of Kentucky with such great high school hoops. Lawrence drives, block Sharp. A third rejection for Jamarion Sharp. Lawrence regains baseline. Dishman challenges the big guy. No finish. Hamilton and Sharp on the baseline trying to gather it. Curious Hamilton finds the handle. McKnight lobs. Sharp gathers and then lost it out of bounds. It's turned over. Hey, you know, they got away with an early stab right there at Davion McKnight, but they still let him get downhill all the way to the paint. It's just Jamarion Sharp and Davion McKnight weren't able to connect. But if you're middle of Tennessee, you got to do the best job you can of staying in front of that guy. You can't just make loose plays up near half court because he's going to make you pay. It's been a huge factor. Those shots he's taken in a game, Art partner, all year, eight. Yeah. Eight field goal attempts for Sharp all year. We talked about the lobs and the rim protecting. He's got three blocks tonight. He can be such an impact player in the game. We've seen that now. Very active. Tiafiel Leonard. He'll drive in and lay it in. I see that. That was a really good job of Tiafiel Leonard of not, of, as we see Cameron Weston get a quick turnover put back. But Tiafiel Leonard drove Jamari Ashaw quick, laid it up fast. Didn't wait for him to come over and block the shot. Weston causing a turnover the lane in. Hamilton almost lost it thanks to T. Leonard, who then takes it away and finds Millen. Here's Cameron West into the open court. Lobs down low. Lawrence with a finish. Middle Tennessee running, gunning. And they're right back in this game, down four. Big time athleticism right there from Eli Lawrence. Cam West a little too physical. Then a technical call. 
Weston the foul and a tee. So a technical and another foul for Cam Weston. That is a big game changer. It's a four-point game. High-flying action here. Yeah, you don't want to destroy the momentum, but here you go. See Eli Lawrence running the floor. Leave it up for him. Throw it down. All right, BJ, big sequence for Middle Tennessee. Cam Weston picks up fouls two and three here in the first half after the made basket. Picked up a foul, too aggressive on the press, and then maybe something for Coach Stansbury. Had a couple words there for the Western bench. This is a big rivalry, but officials in college basketball this year emphasizing sportsmanship and no trash talking allowed. Yeah, and you can never just explicitly say something to the other team's bench, especially on a dead ball. We know this is a passionate player. He wants to help his team win, but now he picks up his third foul. Hurts his team's got to go to the bench. So a play like that, you don't need it. Just walk past the bench, continue to play the game. And he's their leading scorer. So Absolutely. Cameron Weston being on the bench for the middle really hurts here. McKnight will shoot the free throws, plus the ball for Western Kentucky. Yep. We call him Dave here in Bowling Green. Dave on McKnight. Two for two from the line and 12 points. The lead all scorer so far. And obviously, Ronald, this is an emotional game, right? Cameron Weston didn't mean anything bad by it. He didn't mean anything to, you know, be that negative, but you can't let your emotions take over like that when you're a player, because now you put Davion McKnight at the free throw line, he's up to 14 points, and all the momentum that Middle Tennessee had has been destroyed. It's been stopped. It's been done. Put to kaput. So, you don't want that. You don't want that. Plus the ball for Western. Tough. Yep. Because wasn't it wasn't it feeling like this was Middle Tennessee? The game was turning. Rolling? Yes, especially with the yes. lob dunk down there for Lawrence. Another steal. Good rotation. Eli Lawrence for Justin Porter. Theophil Leonard and company in the half court. Physical play and Allen commits the foul. Two fouls on Dante Allen, the Kentucky transfer, heading into the game tonight. Last two games coming off the bench the entire year, his entire time here at Western. Nine for 18 from three, getting a chance to start the last two games. Conference player of the week, but now heads to the bench next to Rick Stansberg. And it's not because it's not playing well in terms of his shooting. Can't turn the ball over, Rhino. They got to cut down on these turns. They're up to eight now. And they early in the game, weren't doing that. Now it's starting to pile up a little bit. T. Leonard. Tried that pass, Coleman Jones regains the loose change and a tie up. He's got a little physical, another technical is called. That's the second against Middle Tennessee. Jared Coleman Jones gonna pick this tee up. We told you in an arch rivalry, things get intense. But the officials are gonna have none of that. No. Another tee. No, anytime it's a rivalry, you see Jared, Jared Coleman Jones get the ball right, he's gonna look to go up. But Damian McKnight just ties him up. And then now, separate, separate if you are Jared Coleman Jones. You need to walk away from the situation. Because once again, Davion McKnight is back at the free throw line, right? Middle Tennessee is gonna say, well, he did it. Jared Coleman Jones, well, he was talking first. But Middle Tennessee is the team that's picked up both of the technical fouls. So, seems like starting with them. McKnight's career best, if you're thinking about it, 34 against Minnesota in 2021. Yeah. He's already up to 16. Has hit all six free throws. Another possession for Western Kentucky. And the game changes again with momentum. Off a really good steal. A pressure defense, the yes. rotation yes. with their full court. D has caused havoc with Western Kentucky tonight. But if you commit the tech, it turns the game around. Yeah, this was a five-point game last time these two teams matched up, Rhino. They've just given Western Kentucky four points at the free throw line. That can be the difference between winning and losing right there. Flop call. This is the flop against T. Leonard, and this is a Class B technical, not a personal foul. One free throw. A lot of text tonight. Absolutely. And it was it's the embellishment with the head it's movement. The head. It's the head there going go. back. I agree with that. And, and now these officials are on edge. They're going to make a, these calls, right? They don't want anything 
extra going on in the game. But this is what happens, right? This is what happens. It starts to snowball. One guy does something, so then another guy does it. And then T. Leonard does something. And now there are five points added. To Three score. technicals in a row. I mean, yep, right? Five total points. Two class A's and a class B. And McKnight cashes in on all the free throws. Yep. And he's six for six on the line tonight. Incredible. We call those plays beating yourself. That's nothing Western Kentucky did to force Middle Tennessee to make those plays. Seven for seven, by the way, now. <laughs> this one with Tacky shot so many. Tease. Four to shoot. Up top. It's Rawls. Too strong. Dishman, strong rebound over Marshall. T. Leonard lost the handle. Never cleared up loose change. DeAndre Dishman, seventh year player. Millen up top, lefty three. Whoa, that's way off. So bad, he actually got the rebound. Tried to bounce to Dishman. Rotation, McKnight, a steal. Davion McKnight over Leonard. Can't lay it in. Rawls finds the rebound. Fresh 20 for Western Kentucky. 215 and counting left in this exciting, very eventful first half of meeting 144 all time between these rivals. He caught. Hangs can't hit from 10. And Leonard has the rebound. But great job by May with Akai right there. There are huge gaps and seams in this Middle Tennessee defense for guys to get downhill. They need to exploit those holes in the Middle Tennessee defense. Ten to shoot for Porter. One or two to go, first half. Lawrence on a curl. Try to go over Sharp, alters again. They got a piece of it, partner. Another block, Demarion exactly. Sharp. 100 blocks on the season. Rawls the take to the 10 for two. Yeah. And one, Jordan Rawls. Chance for a three-point play for Western. And what you got to love about Jordan Rawls, whenever he comes in the game, he's not lacking for confidence. This young man believes in himself. He knows what he can do on the floor and just a terrific finish right there playing through contact. Coming up, at and at the half. Join Brent Stover, Seth Davis, standing by in our New York studio. Check the speed in all the United's college basketball action. It's all coming up on at and at the half. You and I talking this morning in the shoot around. think this is a tipping point type game. You're at seven games left in the regular season. Yep. Really intense Conference USA race to the finish. A lot of good teams led by FAU. Every game's important, right? Absolutely, because this is the time where every locker room is saying, we need to start playing our best basketball. We got to start, you know, coming together. Well, that's because this is it, right? <laughs> you're coming up in the middle of February, moving towards March. This is the time. If you're ever going to turn it around, you got to do it now. In the corner for King, a much needed triple for Middle Tennessee. Elias King, a big response for the 8 3 of the year for him, first of the night. Stops a run for Western Kentucky. And, and Elias King is just a tremendous looking athlete, right? If he can ever become consistent with his game, he's going to be a force for Middle Tennessee. McKnight the take and a foul call. Porter was there. If it's Porter, that's his third. Keep in mind that Cam Weston, another guard for Nick McDevitt, has three fouls. It is foul number three. So two backcourt players for the Blue Raiders are saddled with three fouls here in the first half. Yeah, and that's really going to put Middle Tennessee behind the eight ball now, right? Because you're going to have to look to a guy who's typically not a ball handler to initiate your offense. Another free throw for McKnight. He is eight for eight tonight. Eight of his 18 points from the stripe with four assists. I mean, that's a ball game already and almost a half a play for Davion McKnight. A cool customer, no emotion. Yeah, for one of those guys who's just got an incredible presence on the court for Western Kentucky. He lets his play speak for itself. And he? that in his free throw shoot. <laughs> yeah, that speaks on the scoreboard. <laughs> nine for nine. That's taking advantage of your opportunities for Davion McKnight. Under a minute to go, first half here from Bowling Green. Lawrence in the corner in front of the Western bench. Buries a big three. Really nice flare screen action right there for Coach McDevitt. Eli Lawrence set up his man well, faded off of that screen, got an open three-point shot. Coles today, big fan of D'Angelo Russell, back with the Lakers, a big trade, NBA trade deadline. Man, there was some movement with KD going and Kyrie going. Oh, man. oh boy. Should be an exciting end to the NBA regular season, shouldn't it? I mean, Western Conference is loaded. Incredible. 
10 of the timer. You see the game clock, shot clock differential. Final moments, first half here from Biddle Arena. McKnight trying to hit another shot. Does! What a first half, McKnight! 21 points for Western Kentucky. Final moments, Leonard misfires a three. Rebound, Javarion Sharp. That's the horn, that's the half tonight from Bowling Green. Great first half of action here. End of the first half, 49-39. Western a lead after the break. AT&T at the half, you're watching college basketball on CBS Sports Network. The 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Middle Tennessee has a 10-game win streak in the month of February, dating back to last year. That's going to be put to the test here tonight, head-to-head -head with our arch-rival Western Kentucky, down by 10 at the break. Welcome back to Bowling Green. Dave Ryan, B.J. Taylor, former star guard at UCF. We talked in the opener of the broadcast partner about the intense rivalry. It's been fun to watch tonight, also fun to watch Davion McKnight, 21 first-half points for the Toppers. Yeah, you know, Rhino, one of our keys to the game was that the others needed to come along with Davion McKnight. But Davion McKnight said, hey, listen, I got this. I'll take it over. For you, and he has gotten wherever he has wanted to on the floor tonight. You see him here getting downhill. He's been able to create for others for his big fella, Jamarion Sharp. Get into the lane for these nice short pull up floaters. And then when you get it going, you start hitting guys with the double crossover pull up, Jay. That's how you know a guy is rolling down here in Bowling Green like Davion McKnight is. Time for our first half stats brought to you by Sleep Number and the numbers. Look at that 63% for Western from the field in the first half. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's hard to be down in the game when you score 39 points in the first half shoot 50 percent from the field yourself but then you you allow 63 percent from the other team for the opposing ball club it's tough to win like that rhino and we saw the 11 for 11 free throw number about three of those came from two techs and one flopping call middle tennessee has got to control their emotion and slowly chip away at this lead as we begin the second half which as each coach told us bj during the shoot around today it's not easy Managing emotions in a high-intensity rivalry game. Nine of the 11 free throws came from McKnight. Nine for nine yep. from McKnight from the Cherry Stripe first half. Second half underway, here's Acott, the Boise State transfer. Former All-Mount West tournament and regular season performer. Short on the set action for him to begin the second half. Here's Lawrence. Milling up top, lefty three, airborne. Way short. Now, if you're Western Kentucky, it's very important to get off to a good start here in the second half because Middle Tennessee is going to look to come out hot to try to cut into this lead. Here's Dante Allen, the take on Millen, looking for the end one. And there's a trip to the free throw line to shoot two here for Western Kentucky. And, Ronald, why do I say that Middle Tennessee is going to come out hot? Because in their locker room, they got grilled at halftime. Coach McDevitt said, hey, guys, we're better than this. We need to pick it up on defense. We need to cut down on that Western Kentucky field goal percentage. In Western Kentucky's locker room, it was more of a, hey, let's keep playing how we're playing. Let's keep doing what we're doing, being effective offensively. So if you're Western Kentucky, you don't want to have a letdown as you begin the second half. Tough year for Allen. Had to sit out seven games. And NCAA imposed suspension this year. Went back to last time, last year, when he was at Kentucky. He was actually playing ineligible at that time. Yeah. And when the paperwork all got caught up, his transfer to Western Kentucky was realized that he played seven games, limited minutes, yeah. as a Wildcat, as an ineligible player. So to sit out seven this year, yeah. been a long road to try to get to stardom in Bowling Green for Dante Allen. But, but a credit to him, he stayed locked in, he stayed in the gym, and when his number was called, he was ready to perform. Ten to shoot. Eli Lawrence, leading scorer for Middle Tennessee, block sharp. Officially his fourth rejection. We thought we had him down for four oh, swats yeah. in the first half. Official scores had three in the opening half for Sharp, the nation's leading shot blocker. Yeah, and, and you know with him, it's not all about the blocks, it's also about the number of shots he changes, right? McKnight again. Davion. 23 for Davion McKnight. He's 7 and 9 from the field. And, and that's just a warm up jump shot right there for Davion McKnight. Middle Tennessee cannot allow him such easy shots. Largest lead of the game for the toppers here. On the bounce, pass, Millen to Dishman broken up. Western's looking good here. Allen free, 4 3. Got it! Timeout, Blue Raiders. Western Kentucky rolling here tonight. A big lead. Thank 
Nice, the Kentucky transfer, Dante Allen's three. And Sharp blocking shots again. And Jamari Sharp doing what he does, patrolling the paint, making it difficult. And then when you block shots like that, you're able to get out and run on the other end. Dante Allen keeping his hot shooting going. Next Thursday, 7 Eastern, these Blue Raiders will head for home clash against Dusty May's FAU Owls. Catch the action right here on CBS Sports Network. FAU 18th partner in the net, as we talked about top of the broadcast. Beat Rice tonight, 90-81, 13-1 in Conference USA, 23-2 overall. Are you a believer in the Owls as a possible at-large bid if they don't win the Conference USA tournament next month in Dallas? Yeah, well, I think the biggest question mark to what you just said, Rhino, is when does the loss come? They cannot have an early in, co in the Conference USA tournament loss. It would have to come to a hey, UAB North Texas later on in the Conference USA tournament to probably still get in. But I promise you, Coach Dusty May wants his team to win that Conference USA tournament outright. What a year. Record-setting type year for the Owls in Boca. Lawrence lost at 13 to shoot. Good defense. ACOT for Western Kentucky. They are locked in both ends of the court right now. And dominant, largest lead of the night at 16. It's a conversation, certainly, about FAU and a possible at large. Jerry Palm Bracketology today has them in as of this moment. Lawrence a three. Nice answer for middle. And yet, Middle Tennessee needs to continue to score, obviously, but it's going to have to start on this end of the floor. They're allowing Western Kentucky to still shoot 63% from the floor. That is too high. They're not going to be able to get back in this game trading buckets, Rhino. Also, 19 of 30 for the field. Western, that's just blistering into the second half now. Lawrence, by the way, only double figure scores for middle. He's got 13 tonight. Eight to shoot, Acott. Mm. He'll drive, he'll hang, looking for a roll. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Acott, two points. And now that's what we're talking about, right? That's a tough two, but Middle Tennessee got to come together, right? Got to figure out a way to get some stops on that end of the floor. Not happening. Right now, King lobs. Well, went in. Uh, yeah. Kind of lobbed it, I think, for Dishman. Absolutely. But it went into the basket. Yeah, absolutely was a lob. It was definitely not a shot. Timeout, Rick Stansbury. As McKnight crosses the timeline right in front of us. And we'll take a 30 second pause from Middle Arena, Western Kentucky campus. Bowling Green, it's a good night so far for the home team. McKnight, Sharp have been outstanding. They combined for 30 points, 10 free throws, five blocks, five rebounds, five assists between them. That's been quite a one-two punch. Yep. McKnight has had a huge game. And it's been all Western Kentucky here tonight against their arch rivals. McKnight pulls up, has another one. And the searing hot, sizzling shooting for Western Kentucky continues here. It's incredible. Yeah, it's all, five for McKnight. It's all going for Davion McKnight now, Rhino. Getting into his heavy pull-up game. Just tough, tough to guard. It's tough to guard when you have a player like this to get it going. I had a coach tell me before, it's a lot easier to keep the water off. Because once you let it get going, you start letting it run, it's hard to shut it off. Gets Elias King off balance. You want to see Elias King press up into Davion McKnight, use his length, but when a good player like this, trust me, I know, when a good guard gets it going like this, doesn't matter who's in front of you. Your best 34 came against Minnesota, we told you about three years ago. Leonard was fouled a moment ago, but missed the first free throw. One more here for Tiafio Leonard of Middle Tennessee. About nine points, four rebounds a game for the high flyer. He's fifth all time in New Raider history in block shots. 103 of those had five in a game we called in overtime at home. At the Murphy Center in Murfreesboro against UAB. He's something else. Yeah. Not that time for the free throw line. <laughs> I'm pumping up all, but he misses the free throw. Yeah, yeah. But he's, I mean, he's quite the athlete. I mean, that's undeniable. We saw him block a shot earlier. He's one of the best shot blocking guards, not just in Conference USA, but in the USA. The Raiders 1 of 5 free throw line tonight. That's been a problem. Here's McKnight, who's been their biggest issue. This one way short. Hamilton the rebound, three to shoot, up top, Allen again. Back iron missed this time. Elias King, defensive glass for Middle Tennessee. And that was much better one-on-one -on -one defense from Elias King. You saw how he forced Davion McKnight to shoot a tough shot over him. Can't give him airspace. T. Leonard baseline. Tried that little quick 
Dish there to Dishman. Couldn't handle it, turned over. Leonard almost had a steal on the outlet pass. Lawrence harassing defense. Numbers for the Blue Raiders. Alab, Leonard gathers and scores. Timeout of the court leads us to the media timeout. A little injury for Davion McKnight. So the Western Kentucky trainers will quickly attend to their star guard. Breaking the action, Western by 13 tonight. Davion McKnight coming off a 14 point effort in a win for ninth of the field against UTEP over the weekend. Took a little shot to the head there a few moments ago, BJ. Having a huge game here tonight. Let's check it out. You see him goes with the crossover, and then he got, it looked like his knee hit the, his head hit the knee of Eli Lawrence, and that's tough. You know, like, nose, got the blood coming down, but I tell you what, it hurts right now, but that is going to make for a great picture at some point. You got to put that up in his apartment or his house to show his kids how he was such a warrior out there on the floor. Being intended to now, but he's gone to the Western Kentucky locker room. We don't see him on the bench. Yeah. So out for now. Tough guy, clearly. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Huge night. 25 points, McKnight. 8 of 11 for the field. 9 of 9 from the free throw line. And 5 assists has been fantastic for the toppers. And, and you, you hate to see a player go out with injury. You want everyone to stay healthy on the floor. But as I was going to say, this is the time for Middle Tennessee to attack. Look out, T. Leonard from Lawrence. Up, up, and away on the hammer. I mean, elevation. For Teofrio Leonard of Middle Tennessee, that was incredible. This is the time for Middle Tennessee to attack. Davion McKnight is out. He's been giving you fits all night. Jarius Hamilton, a response three. That's the answer if you're Western Kentucky. Wow. It's just too easy for Western Kentucky to break that press. If you're going to press, you got to actually apply pressure. I know that sounds simple, but that's the point of the press. King bumped on a three, no whistle. Weak side rebound, Dishman. Cam Weston's got it in the corner, a fresh 20 here for the Blue Raiders. Eli Lawrence, lefty three, airborne, perfect. For the leading scorer for Middle Tennessee. Had this team in scoring six times this year. He's en route to becoming the 35th all-time in middle history to score 1,000 career points. Should do that against UAB Saturday. And he's been playing well tonight, 16 points. Shooting well from the three-point line. He's done his part. There's Sharp from Rawls. There's 7-5. Yep. Lob it up there and slam it down. Another big dunk for the big guy. And you wonder how he gets that open when he's that big. But Middle Tennessee is having trouble matching up after they apply their full three-quarter court pressure. Weston gets a pick. Three ball. Top of the backboard and out of play. Anytime Jamarion Sharp is rolling to the rim like he does here, a little give-and-go action with Jordan Rawls, you see T. T. Leonard has got to come over and get in front of Jamarion Sharp. But they've got two defending the ball. They don't know who's covering who to get easy dunks up at the rim. That's the wrong guy to let go free run to the paint. Because once it's up in the air, nobody's going to reach the altitude, the heights, to defend Jamarion Sharp. 101 blocks on the year. Tyler Vanover of Oral Roberts. Nationally, the next best, 80 rejections coming in. So a huge lead again for Sharp. Yep. For a second straight year, should lead the nation in block shots. Press break, press break pass behind Allen that time and turned over by Western Kentucky. And very fortunate for Middle Tennessee because that was going to be another three-on-one situation, most likely turning out in a Western Kentucky bucket as the Warrior, Davion McKnight, returns to the floor. And that's good news for Western Kentucky. Briefly out. A little blood flowing there. Okay, now. All you need is the band-aid on the head. Good to go. Fine. Yeah. There's Leonard. A miss. And right off the bench and the quick fix. McKnight's got the defensive rebound for Western Kentucky. Rawls on a bounce. He's got it back. Gathered Marshall for two. Jordan Rawls has a really nice handle, kind of a herky-jerky game, Northeast-style player. King at the run, needs a three, has got it for Middle Tennessee. Pressure off the made triple for Elias King. Second three ball of the game for King. 
So now scoring hasn't been an issue for Middle Tennessee. We're talking about how well Western Kentucky has played offensively. Middle has not had trouble scoring. It's just they haven't been able to put up as many buckets <laughs> as Western Kentucky has. But if they can lock in on this end defensively, get some stops, they won't have trouble getting back into this game because they're scoring just fine. Western Kentucky partner is shooting 65% from the field. Yeah. In the game, there's McKnight trying for another one. Deep three, a miss. Allen kept alive briefly. To Alfie Leonard, loose change. Lobs, King off the rim, though. And that's the problem. Sometimes they try for the big highlight play, a bump foul in transition against Middle Tennessee. Careless play right there. When you're trying to get back in the game, you can't have turnovers like that. But you highlighted the 65% shooting for Western Kentucky. Middle Tennessee shoot nearly 52% themselves and then this is T Leonard right here I know you're trying to make a play up to Elias King but every possession counts especially when you're down 12 like they are they cannot waste any more possessions in this basketball game two fouls partner T Leonard and out for now for the Blue Raiders it won't be long yeah <laughs> they need him yep most explosive player you see when you're in need of a comeback the way the Blue Raiders are. They've got to press mm -hmm. and try for transition baskets. Rawls up top, gets the screen, doesn't get the three. 7 5 Sharp sets that high post screen. It's out of bounds. Western will keep it when we return to Bowling Green. A timeout in this intense Conference USA rivalry. Only 100 miles separate these two teams. All right, BJ, let's revisit our ATT 5G fast analysis tonight. And you know, we came into this game saying that Western Kentucky had to defend the three-point line better. And Middle Tennessee has done a good job of getting the three-point looks that they want. They are 7 for 16 from behind the line, getting good looks on that end. The trouble has been they can't stop Western Kentucky themselves. So if you're Middle Tennessee, get two or three stops in a row, you give yourself a chance to get back into this ball game. But it's going to start on the defensive end. Rick Stansbury told us after the Western shoot around today, he likes where his team is. Yeah. One, two straight. It's a program that has endured him being out with a health issue for nine games. Their strength coach out for three weeks after he fell and badly hurt himself. And you need that strength coach battling on a daily basis for get ready, warm ups, yeah. weight room work. Luke Frampton, best three point shooter out for the season after being hurt against Charlotte recently. They've absorbed two five game losing streaks this year mm -hmm. for a really good team. A lot of good pieces. If they turn on at the right time, we're seeing the best of Western tonight. There's Marshall, two more, case in point. The uh, coach said it was today, BJ. It is going to be a wild Conference USA tournament coming up in Frisco, Texas. No, it will be. you got four teams up there near the top when you think about FAU, UAB, North Texas, and Middle Tennessee heading into this game. But, you know, before they can look ahead to that, got to take care of business here tonight. Coleman Jones steps in the baseline. And it's 13 turnovers tonight for Middle Tennessee. Still within range with the pressure defense and some outstanding shooters they do have that can turn on and make this very interesting. Yep. Bank, nice cut, Marshall on the baseline. And Sharp regained a loose change, almost jammed it in, a foul call on the way to the basket for Jamari on Sharp. And one of the keys, you know, as they look at film from this game is going to be the press, right? See, when you press, you got to play with effort. You got to play with energy. No defense works without it. And the energy and the effort and the understanding of what they're supposed to do in the press has not been there tonight. Because if you're, if you're going to apply pressure, you can't allow Western Kentucky to just get easy backdoor cuts for opportunities at the rim. Can't do it. Nice can't touch for the free throw line there for the big guy. One more free throw coming up. Foul was on Justin Buford, the sophomore from Middle Tennessee a moment ago. Sharp four dunks tonight, got 124. He is now seven away from the all-time record held by Charles Bassey, great star here at Western, former Conference USA Player of the Year, now in the NBA. Yeah. Played against Charles Bassey my senior year. was an incredible player. We did beat them to win the Myrtle Beach Classic, so. Coach Stans will remember that today at the shoot-around. <laughs> Coleman Jones a take and a foul on Sharp. You remembered all about that. Yeah, it was a good memory for us, you know. <laughs> good one for you. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy Western Kentucky. That's a great school, great institution. Love being here. Good memories. You just like the mascot. I do. Big Red is incredible. He's definitely a top ten mascot in all of college sports. 
And he's underrated. It's a vibe. It's not a he or a she. It's a they. Yeah. It's, it's a vibe. It's, it's a something vibe you feel. Of yeah. the hill. Yes. The hilltop. It's it's remarkable. Cool. We took some pics by the statue by the hotel today. Yeah. Got up there on Instagram and Twitter. I wasn't sure what Big Red was at first. <laughs> I, I thought. I think it's know, pretty cool. It's very unique. I thought it was an animal. It's one of the best mascots in college basketball. Yeah. College sports, I think. Coleman Jones, one more free throw here. It's the second. Sophomore transfer, Jacksonville, Florida, from Northwestern to Big Ten. Here's Allen, the press break across the timeline. Meet at 14. Allen floats, doesn't get a roll. Sharp kept it alive. Offensive rebound is fouled. Justin Buford picks up his second foul of the second half for Middle Tennessee. And they're just having trouble getting matched up with him. You see Jared Coleman Jones come over to contest the shot, and then now there's nobody to put a body on Demarion Sharp. And when they don't have someone to put a body on a 7 5 player, bad recipe if you're Middle Tennessee. Got to keep a body on a big guy like him at all times, or else he's going to come up with offensive rebounds and wreak havoc. 11 points for Sharp, five rebounds, four blocks tonight. A very effective tend to shoot, and that's thrown away. And one of the few poor offensive plays we've seen from Western Kentucky tonight, to give everyone context, Western Kentucky averages 70 points per game on the season, Rhino. They're already at 70 tonight with 10 minutes left to go in the game. That should give you a little bit of understanding of how efficient they've been offensively. Western 2-2 two and two since Rick Stansberry returned. Game 5 tonight, watching King glide in the basket for two. Nice move off the window from the lefty, Elias King. Yep. Middle Tennessee lifted the floor. That means they had none of their players near the basket. That allowed for Elias King to get a nice, hard, strong drive to the rim for the easy layup. And see, now Elias King needs to keep Davion McKnight away from his left hand. Do not let him go left. McKnight. Long three, cooling down second half after a sizzling opening 20. Exchange, Sharp kept it alive, and it's a fresh 20 seconds. Half-court set called by Rick Stansbury. Now down him to the right. You don't want to let him get to the left hand. When he gets to his left hand, he causes trouble. Here's Marshall. Tries that little slip pass to Sharp. Knocked out of bounds. Five to shoot here for Western Kentucky. Allen out. Acott returns for the toppers. And now not only does Middle Tennessee want to contest the shot, Ronald, they got to make sure that they keep Western Kentucky off of the offensive glass. Struggled with that a little bit tonight. Three to shoot. Acott separates. Too strong. On the jumper, but it's out of bounds. Mm -hmm. It's off of Coleman Jones right back to Western Kentucky. Exactly. See, there's five seconds left on the shot clock, and you think if we can just defend the possession, we're good. Well, the possession doesn't end until you get the defensive rebound. Once again, Jamarion Sharp keeps the ball alive. Another Western Kentucky possession. Is that a big game? Rick Stansbury told us today, if he's rebounding well, we know he's playing hard all the time for us, earns the minutes, earns the touches. And Sharp's been a huge factor on both ends tonight. The toppers have missed their last four. One for the last seven from the field. Cooling down here in the second half. Try to change that. Rawls short. T. Leonard back into the game for middle with a rebound. Cam West in transition. Pick from Coleman Jones. West in the bounce. Coleman Jones gathers. Sharp challenges. Got a piece. No foul. Comes right to King for two. Now, if you're Middle Tennessee, this is good. You're chipping away at it. Ten-point game, ten minutes to go. He's got to keep getting stops on the defensive end. There's sure. time. Yep, that's what There's Coach McDevitt time. is preaching. Get stops on the defensive end. 16 for Lawrence, four for King tonight to lead the way for the Blue Raiders. And Stansbury wants a nice, patient possession here to change the momentum. Eight on the timer. McKnight, jump stop. No roll. Coleman Jones, the hands. And that's out of bounds off the big guy, Jamari on short. And 
And one of the things for Western Kentucky that they sometimes have trouble with is that when Jamarion Sharp blocks shots, they don't always come up with the ball. Give a lot of credit to Middle Tennessee and Elias King for sticking with that play and chipping. They're fighting, right? You got to do that in a game like this. It hasn't gone your way. It's been tough, but you got to continue to fight. You got to continue to compete and continue to figure out a way to get your team back in this ball game. And that's what Coach McDevitt's ball court is doing. Darius Hamilton back in here, Parker, for Western Kentucky. Marshall is out. Sharp has left and gone to the Western Kentucky locker room. So we'll keep you up to date on what happens with the 7-5 center as soon as we know. Good possession here. The cut. Lawrence the jam. Eli Lawrence. The give and go with King and the hammer. Terrific backdoor cut. He's so athletic when he can make those plays. It's really tough to defend. Western Kentucky loves to get up the line. Those plays are there often from Middle Tennessee, but we got a ball game now, Rhino. The eight-point game. Middle Tennessee's on an 8-0 run. We got ourselves a ball game. Middle the Tennessee. Raiders here partner hit four of the last five. Yep. Game is flipped. Yep. They fought their way right back into this thing. Here's Rawls the handle. Two-man game. Up top. John. Can't click from deep. Rebound loose. Comes to Weston. And, and that's not the look that Coach Stanberry wants from his backup center. It's just Weston not. drives. Some contact. Look at the end one. He's got it. Cameron Weston. Physical through contact on McKnight. Chance for a three-point play for Middle Tennessee. And hang on a minute here. Hang on, BJ. We got a game here tonight. Absolutely, Ronald. One of our keys to the game was that Middle Tennessee needed to impose their physicality, and they're doing it now. They're flexing their muscle here in Bowling Green. Tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern. More action. For the Buckeye State Akron defending conference tournament champions the Mid-American Conference takes on Ohio. Catch tip off here on CBS Sports Network. That conference, BJ, we've done a couple games in that league. It's tight. It is. Toledo beat Akron by 10 on Tuesday after Akron beat Wagon Wheel arch rival Kent State on Friday. So it's going to be a really good finish in the MAC heading to Cleveland next month. Middle Tennessee on a run here. And this is exactly what we talked about. They haven't had trouble scoring tonight. That's why they've been able to go on a 10-0 run, but it's the defense. It's the defense. They've picked it up. They've held Western Kentucky on 70 now for about three, four minutes. they got to continue this play if they want to chop enough to get back in the lead. No lead tonight. Weston hits the free throw. Foul before the break. Completes a three-point play. No ties no. tonight. So it has not been a back-and-forth game. No. It's been a game dominated by Western Kentucky until now. 11-0 run. For Middle Tennessee, all of a sudden a five-point game. And speaking with people earlier, you know, today we talked with staff. They said West Kentucky has got to finish games. They got to do a better job of that. McKnight has the answer. 27 of the game for Davion McKnight. West Kentucky's been in a lot of close games this year, Wino. They're coming closer to that winning time now as we come down the stretch. They got to learn to close out these games. Weston drives, can't finish. Dishman kept it alive briefly. Loose change. Weston for King. Deep three on the way. Rattles it in. Wow, Elias King has got three triples. A huge shot to cut it to four for Middle Tennessee. And the energy's so much better for Middle Tennessee now. The bench is up. They're getting into it. They're starting to play with that belief, starting to play with that fire. King is five for five from the field. Two for two from beyond the arc in the second half. Big reason. They come close to catching Western Kentucky. There's Acott with a nice drive to the baseline off the glass for two. Yeah, nice job of Emmanuel Acott of using his size to spin off the defender, finish through a little bit of contact up near the rim. Uncle Dish, seventh year player, who King has been red hot in this game. Not this time. First miss for King, second half. Can't hit. On the drive, Sharp still out. Went to the locker room, as we told you a moment ago. Has returned, though, for Western Kentucky, but on the bench next to Rick Stansbury for the moment. Rawls left all by himself for three, but a front iron miss. Weston tips to himself. Numbers here for the Blue Raiders. Good pass, Dishman foul hard on the way up there by Falou Jean. And free throws on the way for Middle Tennessee. And that's how, if you're Middle Tennessee, you get out, you turn defense into offense, get out and transition, doing what they do best. But something to watch here is 
without Jamarion Sharp, right? That's Falu Jung committing the foul in that last play. Jamarion Sharp's in the game. They probably don't score. Probably a block shot, right? But you don't have your big fella in there as he now returns. Changes things. Sharp back briefly to the Western locker room for treatment. One more free throw here for Dishman. He's hurt on a foreign tour trip in 2020. It's an amazing story. And missed basically two years. Had to take a red shirt. Yeah. This is seventh year, had a medical hardship year. And in our discussion with him earlier this season, his game is different. He's not a high flyer that he once was. He's more of a solid post guy who doesn't play above the rim, but he still loves the game and loves to be a part of Middle Tennessee's program. Yeah, and his body's changed in the weight room a lot more now. He uses strength and craftiness to be effective. Lawrence rebound. Good contest baseline. Dishman runs the court right on cue. He still moves pretty well. DeAndre Dishman in transition, gathers, lays it in. It's a one possession game. Two point lead for Western. Dominant all night, not anymore. Want to come back in this heated Conference USA rivalry. And that's three seconds in there by Jamarion Sharp. He just got out. Barely. Rawls, Sharp. Good rotation. Lawrence commits the foul with under five on the timer. And Jamarion Sharp, I mean, one of the most athletic players for West Kentucky. He doesn't usually get rim ran like this, but DeAndre Dishman got out, put his track shoes on, and beat Jamarion Sharp down the floor for the easy bucket. A thousand six days between games for DeAndre Dishman. He was hurt on a foreign trip tour to Costa Rica in November of 2020. It's amazing. Such a long time. Stayed with it. Rehab was, he told us, seemed endless at times. Almost uh, gave up several times. Almost retired, but absolutely. Big factor now. Look out! <laughs> Hamilton driving to the basket. Foul hard on the way up by T. Leonard as he elevates and tries to hammer. A couple free throws here, Jairus Hamilton. Yeah. Really nice movement without the basketball by Jairus Hamilton. But you know every time you go up around T. Leonard, you're not getting nothing easy, but he gets him on the arm there on the elbow as he goes up for the high-rise slam. But I tell you what, I mean, T. Leonard gives you nothing easy at the rim. Every time you go up around him, Ronald, you have to know this is gonna be contested. Lawrence King Leonard have pro bodies. Look at these guys, their athleticism, their wingspan, high flying ability, Burt Leap. I mean, yep. I think they're pros. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're all in that body type between 6'5 to 6'8, long arms, athletic. They, they have the frame, they have that build. Hamilton, the senior, BC Maryland transfer, third of three double figure scores for Western entering play tonight. Good trip to the free throw line. On the five to go in regulation. Four-point lead for the home team, and led by as many as 16, and Emmanuel caught the bump way beyond the three-point line on Elias King. It's a bit of over-aggression right there from Emmanuel Acott. Got a player 40 feet from the rim. Just stay in front, stay solid. No need to get out there and bump him like that. Two fouls on Acott, partner. Five team fouls on Rick Stansbury's team. Slow recovery, had a coach in his first two games back from a stool, recovering from the health issues. Now feels close to 100%. Weston hangs, gets a roll, Cam Weston. A pretty looking shot for Middle Tennessee. A one possession game again. And Cameron Weston loves that mid-range spot. He comes off the ball screen, paces, surveys. That's his sweet spot to get buckets. Three Blue Raiders double figures. 14 for Weston, 18 Lawrence, 17 Elias King tonight. Iso, Acott. Successful for the Boise State transfer. Nice looking move with that little jump hook. Set play. Lawrence at the rim, buries a three and stays hot for Middle Tennessee. Big triple for the lefty. Got ourselves a back and forth game oh. here, don't we, Rhino? He's got 21. <laughs> He's got five threes tonight yeah. on seven attempts from beyond the arc. One point game. Can McKnight respond? Extended elbow jumper, back iron miss too strong. Rebound Lawrence. Maybe Middle can get a lead here. Dishman to the basket is foul. And DeAndre Dishman will try to do just that, shooting some free throws when we return to Bowling Green.
This game has been turned around by Middle Tennessee in the second half. Western by one. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. Middle Tennessee swept Western Kentucky last year, their 10th all-time sweep in any season with multiple meetings. And this one, part has been a classic thanks to an incredible second half of the Blue Raiders here. Absolutely. They have made it much more difficult on Western Kentucky to score on the offensive end. And that has allowed them to make plays like this on the offensive end. You look at Elias King, what he's been able to do off the bench, making big plays. The seventh-year veteran doing what he always does, DeAndre Dishman. And then their best player, Eli Lawrence, continuing to knock down three balls like he's done all season a 23 to 8 run we said they need to pick it up on defense in the second half and they've done that Middle Tennessee tied with UAB 8 and 5 league record entering play here tonight Dishman a couple free throws has one more ties the game and a chance for middle's first lead of the night so critical to be in the top five they get a bye to the quarterfinals in this year's conference USA tournament for the Dallas Metroplex 11 teams in the league this year with all the realignment happening, it's critical. You've got to be top five, right? You want to avoid four games in four days. Absolutely. That one game difference is so significant. You get the bye, you only got to win the three to take home the championship. One extra one, it's a lot. It's four back-to-back -back days. First lead of the night. Middle Tennessee by one down by as many as 16 in the second half. Allen, some foul trouble tonight. He's got four, and he's held on the way to the basket. Only topper with four fouls. The only Western player in foul trouble at all tonight. But they've done such a better job of making it difficult on Western Kentucky on the offensive end. We know Davion McKnight had 21 points in the first half, Rhino. He's now at 27. Only six points here in the second half. Kudos to this Middle Tennessee team for locking in, coming together, and making it much more challenging on Western Kentucky to score the basketball. Three fouls on Lawrence B.J. 17 foul, middle here, second half, so one and one. On the way here for Allen. Rick Stansbury knows it's gonna be a close game. He said to us today, every game now is so important as they try to move up. It's been a disappointing year for them. Yeah. With a couple of five game losing streaks. He's been out, as we talked about, with a health issue. Bill Cunningham to his right. Our left was the interim coach for nine games. The team went three and six. I thought it was interesting that Coach Stansbury told us today, don't blame the players. Yeah, one more free throw for Allen. Don't blame Coach Cunningham. Blame me. I was out. Now, it's a health issue. Pretty serious one to miss nine games, but it disrupted the entire season. And, you know, as, as a player, right, from a player's perspective, it allows you to play more freely, right? You don't feel that accountability of, oh, it was our fault. You know, when Coach was gone, we didn't get the job done. You love it when your head coach said, hey, man, it was on me. It's on us. Western back up by one. Double-figure game for Allen again. Three to go in regulation. Out of bounds. Turned over. Sideline call against Eli Lawrence. Right back to Western Kentucky. 14 of the 26 miscues in the game for the Blue Raiders so far. Now, this is Davion McKnight time for Western Kentucky. Pretty much every play from here on out usually goes through him or Emmanuel Acott in an isolation situation. Acott on Tiafio Lawrence. With 10 to shoot the back in the personal foul. Emmanuel Acott, play designed for him on the half court action, shoots a couple free throws. Yeah, and, and now to finish out this game, that is exactly what Western Kentucky is going to do. They're either going to run a ball screen in action with Davion McKnight, or they're going to allow Emmanuel Acott, as we see here, to go one on one in the isolation situation, no matter who is guarding him. Four fouls on Team Leonard. That's big. One more free throw here for Acott. Coming up next, game two of our college basketball doubleheader. Pepperdine hosts BYU, West Coast Conference. Keep it right here on CBS Sports Network. More great hoops on the way. Out to Malibu. Yeah, yeah, beautiful place. Gorgeous. Beautiful place to be. Might be the nicest, prettiest campus anywhere in the country. You have a vacation home out there. Right? <laughs> I thought you had a couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Play pro ball. I got pro ball. <laughs> Acott, big free throw. Three point game, one possession. Heading down a two and a half to go in our melting second half clock here from Bowling Green. Big crowd at Dental Arena gets involved. 
Leonard with a four foul. The back end, the ISO. Tough shot, too strong. Allen has the defensive glass for Western Kentucky. Now, once again, Davion McKnight ball screen action or the Emmanuel Acott isolation. Or just leave him wide open at the rim. How did it get so open by the defense? McKnight lays it in. We've got a timeout. Major breakdown, half court defense, Blue Raiders. McKnight, a huge game, 29 points. We're back at 30. And now, anytime Ronald Western Kentucky gets into a late game situation like this, they love to go with the Davion McKnight dribble weave action, right? They're always going to run this. This is what they love to do. And you see all the switching up top, the pointing from Middle Tennessee. That is how they lose Davion McKnight on the back end. When you switch, you have to come together and communicate who has who. You can't just point fingers. Career best we talked about against Minnesota, the Big Ten back in 2021 was 34 for McKnight. Season best against Wright State back in December of 32. Huge game here. But what a defensive lapse for Middle Tennessee, known as one of the top half-court defensive teams in Conference USA. Big breakdown, yeah. five-point game. And you see that a lot. The team switch. Guys just start pointing because it's easier, right? You get lazy, you get a little bit lax of days ago. That's how you lose a player like Davion McKnight right under the rim. 6-0, top run, last a minute, 11 seconds, heading into this possession here for middle. On a two to go in regulation. King the handle. Big possession. Weston, into the corner. Leonard hits it. Tiafio Leonard's first three of the game, a big triple. Makes it a one possession contest again. Big time shot from T. Leonard. Confidence stepped into it, held his follow through. Terrific, terrific shot in a big time moment. Five Blue Raiders now double figures. He's got 11. One for three from beyond the arc. Jarius Hamilton on a bounce for Acott, eight to shoot. A minute 15 in regulation. Here's Acott, the ISO. Pangs gets the roll. Big shot for the Hilltoppers. Hamilton's hurt. He's limping. And sometimes you got to walk those off. Whenever you roll an ankle like that, walking it off, keeping the blood flowing is the best thing you can do for it. Lawrence to handle here. Four-point game. The last minute on a bounce. Here's Dishman. Hangs but can't hit. King trying to get the rebound, can't find it. Brought down by Jarius Hamilton, injured ankle and all. And a foul call in the backcourt. Free throws here for Western Kentucky, up by four. And can you tell Jarius Hamilton wants to win this ball game? These are winning basketball plays. Ankle injury and all, he says, I don't care. I'm going up, I'm getting this rebound. And I wish you guys would try to take it from me. Kudos to Jairus Hamilton for fighting underneath the basket. On the game, Western Kentucky, 20 of 21 from the line, front end. Free throw, the one on one, a huge hit there. Jarius Hamilton, three for three from the line. Incredible game from the free throw line for the home team tonight. Hits two. Lead is six. Weston drives the basket. Sharp bothers him. Follow slam try. Dishman foul. Free throws on the way here. That's a best case scenario for Middle Tennessee. Absolutely. Quick drive to the rim. Get downhill, two free throws, stop the clock. That's exactly what they wanted. If they couldn't score the basket, obviously. Two fouls on Sharp. One more free throw for Dishman. Misses the first. Can't miss the free throws, though. Can't miss the free throws. Have been four for four from the line. Ten points, four rebounds for Uncle Dish, as he's known. Seventh year senior. Transfer from Eastern Kentucky. From Lexington. One of the great feel-good stories of college basketball. Hits the second.
Pressure off the main free throw. Blue Raiders badly want to turn over here. Yeah, they're going to press now. They're going to have to foul here. They can't let the clock run. They're going to have to foul. Yeah, here's the foul. Rawls will shoot. Ten team fouls now. So two free throws from here on in on the way for Western Kentucky. Up by five. Throw a quick trap on in the backcourt. Try to force a turnover. As soon as the ball gets across half court, go in for the foul. Typically on one of Western Kentucky's poor free throw shooters, but got to get someone to the line. Just can't let the clock run. Rawls continues his incredible night. Yeah. For Western from the line. 23 of 24, Peach. Oh, the man. game. Remarkable. Now that is free throw shooter. <laughs> That's, that, that is outstanding. Not this time. This is the second. Two possession game. Half a minute to go, second half. Contested three, a miss. Short from Lawrence. McKnight, the loose change rebound. Foul by Weston. Things looking good for the home team here. Looking for the regular season split with their arch rivals. You know, Western Kentucky had control of this game from the beginning, right, Rhino? They, they are the team that was deserving of winning. You hear that a lot in college basketball, the team who's deserving of winning. And they, they were deserving of winning tonight, but they got to make sure they close it out by making free throws and being sharp on the defensive end. McKnight amazing from the line tonight, 10 of 10. 30 points for Davion McKnight. Four shy of his career best. Seventh 20 plus point game of the season, 19th of his career. Hits another emblematic of there. Outstanding. Amazing effort from the free throw line. Yeah. 11 for 11 for McKnight. Final moments here's King fires a three. Somehow gets a roll on a weird bounce off the back of the gutter iron. ball. That's a gutter ball make. That was a thud and somehow a drop. We've got a timeout. 30 second break. Middle Tennessee trying to hang on here down the stretch. All right, BJ, 14 seconds. Lead is five here for Western. If Middle have a chance, what do they do here to try to make a last second comeback? So the best thing they can do is force a five second call. Do not, let, do not allow the ball to be inbounded because as soon as it's inbounded, maybe you throw on one quick trap, but you got to foul right away. Can't let time run off the clock. It's too precious at this moment in the game. Balls inbound. McKnight is fouled by West. So see, they didn't even they didn't even throw on a trap. They just went directly with a foul. So that's the two options you have, right? Go right with the foul. Don't even don't even let the trap happen. Just foul. Keep the time on the clock. Cam West has fouled out here. Parties played well tonight. Nice. Nice. Has the three early fouls with a technical in the first half. 14 points. Four rebounds and ten assists tonight for West and a double double with helpers for Cameron West and fabulous for Blue Raiders. Yeah, he played really well here tonight. You know, he bounced back from that that poor technical foul he had early in the game, but he was able to have a really nice impact on the game. It wasn't the offense. Hasn't been the offense for Middle Tennessee. It's been the defense. 32 for McNabb. 12 for 12 from the line. Five rebounds, five assists. I think he's player of the game. You know, you're really going out of limb with that one, aren't you? <laughs> the lefty, can he do it? Stay perfect for the line, yeah! I mean, that's fitting. Yeah. Emblematic of an amazing game for McKnight. 13 and 13 for the free throw line. 33, one shot of his career best, but a season best for McKnight tonight. Final moments, Tiafio Leonard rattles in a three, and a quick timeout with 4.8. Remaining second half call by Nick McPitt. The reigning Conference USA Coach of the Year of Middle Tennessee. Back in 30 seconds for the final moments of this one tonight. Fifth year leading the Blue Raider program, 10th year overall. The UNC Asheville grad was a head coach there. Nick McDevitt talks things over. McKnight a huge game. One shot of his career best. He's tied a career high with 13 made free throws tonight. Four point lead. For Western, 4.8 to go, no timeouts, Middle Tennessee. Down court, Lawrence trying to break it up, McKnight gathers in the final seconds. And that's it. These two arch rivals meeting for the 144th time. This is a fun game to watch. Western hangs on. They led 
39 minutes, 22 seconds of this game. <laughs> BJ, this was close though in the second half. Middle made a great run. And in the end, WKU is a little bit better. Absolutely. Western Kentucky carried this game from beginning pretty much all the way through the end. Did what they were supposed to do. Got themselves back in the fight of the Conference USA standings. 93-89 the final for Western Kentucky. Now for B.J. Taylor and the entire crew. Dave Ryan saying so long from Bowling Green, Kentucky. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Coming up next, BYU Pepperdine. So long from Bowling Green. Now back to Brent Stover and Seth Davis in New York. Guys.